gentlemen, my name is Joshua Harper. I'm here today with Jay Talk, joined by my esteemed co-host, J1 Hero. Hello. What's up, what's up, what's up? And we are joined today by a very special guest, uh, Cameron. Cameron C. Knight. A.K.A. Sexual Chocolate. Sexual chocolate. Now AKA we AKA C Night Art, aka C Night Comments, aka Don't don't drop the other name. The boss. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to, but yeah. I'm saying. Uh, now we we both know Cameron from outside of uh, J Talk. We've been friends for a while now, all of us, so Let's speak for yourself and stuff. <laughs> we thought we'd have a it would be fun to have him on, you know. So everyone, this is Cameron and he actually drew this wonderful picture you're seeing on screen right now. Uh, it is a picture of uh, my character. It's the cover for Chapter 1 of Dizzy. And this is actually the first time I'm revealing this publicly. So you're in for a little treat. This is uh, some of his work. And you'll, we'll include links to other stuff by camera later on. But today we are here to talk about a very special thing called music. Music with creating. Specifically, what is your the theme song for your comic or your what is your anime theme song? Is I guess the question. Jay, you brought this up to me. Jay, what is your uh, theme song for Infinite? Infinite: The Journey's theme song. It is the song by Glitch Mob called "Fortune Days." Um, that was the song I listened to when I when I really got into knee deep into the designing and writing M Infinite, and it was always on constant replay. So that was the song that pushed me to keep going. So I would definitely have to pay homage to that song as being the theme song. If I could have one, that's what it would be. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Uh, do you have any other theme songs for Infinite? Any other songs that you think would be interesting to have on Infinite? Like if you were to make an Infinite soundtrack, name let's say name three. So you got Glitch Mob, Fortune Days. What are some two other ones? Um, by, oh, man, that's a tough one. Because there's so many I've heard over the times, but I haven't actually been able to put, like, um, name, wait, hold on. Um, Yo, Jay, this was this was in the actual uh, pamphlet I sent you about what we're going to talk about today, so. Well, yeah, I know, but I'm trying to think. That was a hard one to pick anyway. Like, I just, yeah. I don't have three other songs. Like, that's the only song I have. It's the only song? Yeah, yeah. like, there, are, there aren't any other, like, all the other songs I have on playlists have inspired other songs and ideas, but there mm -hmm. was one from, um, there was like two other ones from Glitch Mob. I think one was called um, Flight by Glitch Mob. That was another one. And then uh, What I Believe by um, Skillet. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. It's cool, cool. Now, Cameron, do you make a comic based around music, kind of? Right? Mm. Uh. Right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have, you have, you have uh, your comic base and... And that's a lot. That has a lot to do with music on it. Like you said, uh, is um, it? I'll let you explain it. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's based around music. I mean, granted, like I was telling Jay, talking to Jay the other, the other, um, the other night. Uh, I mean, it's kind of on a. It's gonna be on a little hiatus right now since I'm working on, mm -hmm. um, run full time. Yeah. So I guess I can give the main songs for both of them. I mean, bass would honestly be <clears throat> a mix of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if I had to pick a main theme song for bass, whew, it would be okay. Hold on. Probably one of the songs that was on um, Jet Set Radio's uh soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like like the funky like. It had this like funky hip hop beat to it. I can't, but I cannot remember the actual name of it. Oh, Heroes. Yeah. So I can actually remember it. I think it was called Humming the Baseline. Yeah, Humming the Baseline. That was definitely it. Um, yeah, I, li I like that one. I, I would probably have to say it's a good combination of what I like as far as like it had all these different sounds in it. It wasn't one particular because I don't, I didn't want basically like a, the theme song for it to be like corny, like some electro music. But um, <laughs> it definitely has a hip hop inspired feel to the comic, but for Run now, since that's kind of like my main focus, um, mm -hmm. I would probably say the theme song for it would either be um, One OK Rock, which is a band I've been listening to for a little bit now, um, mm -hmm. might be The Answer Is Near by them, which is one of the more popular, I guess, like, 
mm-hmm. bring a smash hit songs and kind of put them on the map. Um, and then also too, a song by uh, what's the name of that group? Um, Thirty Seconds to Mars, I think is what they're called. Yeah, uh, they have a song called Kings and Queens. And, like I love the beginning and like the ending. Like when it starts off, it's like this like drum kind of like you can kind of hear like the anticipation. Um, mm-hmm. Just like the beginning part of it is like for some reason like when it hits, when like that song hits, like I think about like like the journey kind of beginning and like them yeah. looking off or whatever. But uh, probably like those two songs. I couldn't just pick one because like I feel like throughout the comic there will be songs that fit certain parts. Mm-hmm. Um, but for right now, I guess those two would be the soundtrack of my anime if I if I could if I could do that. Yeah, no, that sounds cool. I, uh, I you, you talk about uh, kings and queens, and I, I, if I recall correctly, it's the one with like a nice long build and yeah, has a yeah, yeah. right at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, uh, I remember, I remember that having like this. That that I definitely can hear the journey in that, like the the building and the anticipation mm-hmm. growing. Uh, for me, I guess I'll come, I'll come out and say mine. Uh, I pick three because I, I. I I was the one to ask the question, so I figured I might as well answer it. Uh, I have Right Back at It Again by A Day to Remember, and Palisades Park by Counting Crows. Now, this is the, the third one was the tough one, because, you know, I can fill two slots easily with songs that remind me of Dizzy. Uh, mm. But the third one was like, ooh, I gotta make sure I pick something that counts. And I ended up going with Jukebox Hero by Foreigner. I felt that was like a really I like good... I, know, I feel like but, I know that song. I, I guarantee you've heard it before. Yeah, it sounds very um, familiar. It's a it's uh, it's <laughs> it's by a, it's by a foreigner. It's about like this guy who he begins with like he listens to the show. He couldn't get tickets. It was this is the classic line. He couldn't get tickets. It was a sold out show. Mm. So he gets uh, he listens to it ever so slightly. He hears faint little sounds from it, and it inspires him to go out, get a guitar, and learn to play music, and. That's the whole thing behind the jukebox hero is, you know, he's a jukebox hero. He's a jukebox hero. I yeah. guarantee you, you've heard uh, another myself and another mutual friend of ours, uh, M. Burner. I, I hear I sing it a lot with him when he's in the hangouts. Okay. But, uh, no, it's a it's a fun feel good kind of song. I like I pick my music, uh, like the way I picked it was I picked three songs that remind me of like. They like camaraderie, style, attitude, and nothing like nothing can stop me kind of attitude. Mm. You know, the song right back at it again by it, I remember comes from an album called Common Courtesy, which is an entire album built around this guy trying to stop them from creating more music. They they said we're gonna make our music and you can't stop us. And they were signed to a label at the time that was just absolutely horrible, forcing them to make music they didn't want to make. And yeah. you know. And so it was. It was kind of like this rebellion kind of album. So for me, it was. It was like a, it was a song I love for Dizzy, which is kind of what Dizzy is to me. Is like this rebellion style story of mm-hmm. camaraderie. So definitely. Yeah. Um. Did we talk to you? Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, the question I was like, so if like if that was if you had to pick a band or an artist to create your theme song for your for Dizzy, that would be them. Probably yeah, they're, they 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 capture that rebellion style attitude I like a lot. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, Glitch Mob would definitely be mine. Yeah, I have to check them. I just looked them up on Spotify, so I'm like I'm gonna take, give them a listen after. Yeah, it's called Fortune Days. Fortune Days was the uh, first one. Sky Toucher was the second one. Um, okay. Yeah, and I'll include links to all this stuff in the uh, the both the VOD of this, the VOD. I'll include links to all the music we're talking about below, and you can just click on it and go listen to them. You know, really off topic, since we're speaking about music <laughs> and anime, um, well, it's not really off topic, it's kind of go hand in hand, but um, I think personally when I when I watch them, which are AMVs, the anime music videos, mm-hmm. those things really do give me life. Like, yeah. I don't know if there aren't that many people out there that, that don't enjoy them, but I really enjoy them. Like, there are scenes that I watch from anime alone only oh, yeah. on the AMV. I cannot watch them regularly anymore on a TV show because it makes no sense anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, you see those well-made AMVs where they, they're not just, like, cobbled together 
pictures and, and recorded video. It's like they put it heart and soul into creating it. It really looks good. Like it, you're like, oh my gosh, it this is not a scene from anime. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. right. If you, yeah, people work hard on those things, man. Super hard. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, it, it shows, I think. It, 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 I like AMBs a lot as well. I'm with you there, Jay. But, uh, no, it's uh, music is an interesting thing when you're creating. It definitely influences how you create, how you define your story. I know that it, when I listen to different music, I can see it in my writing. I don't listen to the same music for all the stories I write. When I write mm-hmm. short stories or when I write things on my downtime, I listen to different music generally. Um you know, and we all have those those musical inspiration moments where we're like, "Oh, this is so good." And that generally leads into I I actually I segment my music for what kind of story I want to write. Um, if I'm of course I'm just, if I listen to music for fun, I'm just listening to music for fun. But if I'm writing, I'll listen to I have th- I have all these different playlists on Spotify, and I'll listen to this band when I'm making a somber story, this band when I'm making that, because it really shows, and I think it actually makes. You're writing, you're creating better because it gets you more emotionally tuned to what you're trying to create. Mm-hmm. How do you guys feel about that? No, I no, I completely understand. Like when I draw, like I literally have like you know a playlist that is you know dedicated to either like just my like you know art and drawing in general. So it kind of just switches and shuffles. I don't have anything dedicated to like you know either run or, run or bass specifically, but um some just just my I feel like my type of music that gets me. That keeps me creative, makes me feel good, or whatever. <clears throat> now, there's random times I kind of go off that playlist, but for the most part, like I have to have something playing. So either it's either music or podcast or something. Mm-hmm. Do you listen to what kind of music? Do, so this leads me to my second question, I guess, is like workflow music. Uh, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Is like I, when I'm creating, I'll listen to different music. When I'm working, I'll listen to different music. Do you? listen to different music while you're working than you do when you're drawing or you're writing or creating? Uh, hmm. When I'm drawing, it's usually between these two playlists I kind of go through. Um, either I listen to a lot of uh, <laughs> I listen to a lot of Nerdcore, which is like a mm-hmm. genre I kind of came across. I was like, I think I told you know, Jay or a couple people about it. Um, no, this is a genre of music I came across that is uh, like music that is definitely, I guess you could say based around, I don't want to say it's just based around like nerd, I don't want to say the word nerd or like comics and manga. I mean, yeah, a lot of it is, like, that is obviously the basis of it, but it's not just that, you know, but a, a lot of the things that they do, they might take 8-bit sounds, add like a hip-hop beat to it or add like a rock beat to it, and it comes out with, like some really dope stuff. There's a lot of really good artists out there. Um one specifically that I, you know that I, I like a lot. A couple is uh, this one guy named Megaran, who also goes by the name Random. He's like a big name in that whole genre. And uh, another guy I like named Sky Blue, and another girl, female um, rapper by the name of uh, her name is Samus. Um, that I did so actually did, uh, and, uh, had the opportunity to do some work for. It. But no, there, there's just some of the people that I listen to out of that genre that I actually really like. I like their music a lot. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. What about you, Jay? Do you, like, segment your music based on, like, workflow, on writing, on infinite, on other stories you create? Absolutely. I, I truly do. I, um, I believe, speaking on this in the past podcast, that music is um, a vital part of me, but it also was a vital part of my creative process because I use it when I am writing. Because when I'm out and about on the go, I literally write everything down. I wait till I get home to put music on that puts me into the mindset for workflow. And then that way it ends up making it better for me um, to visualize, to see um, everything as it goes. Uh, When I'm watching um, uh, scenes play out in my head while I'm listening to music, it makes it easier for me to write them because I can see them like vividly. Kind of like you have that dream that you remember, but you really don't remember everything that you wake up from. Like, Man, I'm mad I woke up from that dream. It was so real, so realistic. That's what music does for me. So I do have them segmented off, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. So I'm curious now, Jay. Uh, you mentioned Glitch Mob helping to... You listened to that a lot while you were creating Infinite's characters, correct? E- yes, yes. 
Yeah. So do you think that influences how you created the characters? Now I know we talk about how music influences creations, but are there specific L times where you're listening to that music and you got this inspiration thing listening to it? You're like, man, I'm gonna. That's a good idea. I'm gonna do that, and it helped inspire different elements of Ko or the Guardians or Zathor. Uh, no, actually, Ko, Ko, the Guardians, and and Zathor alone, oh, and Eros. The main protagonist, the antagonist, those all were created um, off of other different ideas and um, design thoughts. Um, the music itself kept me alive for the energy. And what's what the reason why this question came up as a topic for me is because whenever I listened to Glitch Mob, I was picturing the anime being played out. So this was mainly for the energy and mainly for the visualization to keep me going. It was like my um. My fuel, my inner, my my gas. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really to. It was like it kept giving me the fuel and the energy to go forth and create and to keep creating. Yeah. yeah if I had to say off topic about where the guardians are based off of, they're based off of the different the different cultures of the world. Anaya being from like the Latin culture, Talzin being from the Persian culture, uh, Latian being from the European culture, and Shinko being from the Asian culture. Okay. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, no, that's good. Uh, Cameron, when you create characters, do you do you ha feel like music impacts how you create and design characters? Have you ever been making a character and listening to music and have that be like that? Be like, oh, I'm gonna change this design. This music has inspired me. Um, I was like, kind of agree with you know, uh, Jay in this one. I mean, not not really. Like. I feel like music for me is like the fuel to keep mm -hmm. going. Like you know, I'm like amped. You know, I'm amped to get you know, to get it. You know, because that's what I think of. I think like you know when I'm drawing and I have these music in my head. I think about you know all of a sudden I kind of yeah it's like almost like an A and B. You know, like mm -hmm. like like Jay was saying like you know I'll be drawing and like I hear this music. I'm like dang man this this scene right here would go great with this music or whatever. So like it, it, more, it more so kind of just gets me amped, keeps me focused on what I'm doing. Um, as far as you know, inspiration goes, that's more so visual for me. So like, I'm scouring the internet, whatever, whatever website, more, whatever I see. Um, one thing that I would probably say that influences me a lot is uh, um, I like clothes, like mm -hmm. you know, fashion and stuff like that. So like, when I see like a really dope, like on Pinterest, um, it's funny. I was just talking to one of my friends, like. I'm almost at the point where, like, man, I rarely even save anything. I just go on my Pinterest boards, and, like, all of my inspiration is there. But um, I might see, like, a really dope coat that was made, you know, that's actually a real tangible item. And I'm like, dang, that's really sweet, man. Like, I would love for, like, one of my characters to kind of, like, have something like that. And I'll save it. I'll save that picture or whatever, and I'll kind of, like, I'll use it for later and tweak it and make it my own. Um, something like that, something along those lines. Like I really care about, like when it comes to my characters, I care about what they're wearing, how it goes along with the, uh, the the theme or the atmosphere of my comic. Those things really matter to me. Like I take days on character designs, or I'll redraw something like five or six, five or six times when it comes to the characters. Yeah. No, that's uh, interesting. I, this past weekend, uh, I got my girlfriend was in town, and she got me uh, the Soul Eater Funko Pop as a present. And I was thinking about it. Soul Eater is actually one of the few series where they go through fashion frequently. Uh, mm -hmm. so whenever they're in their downtime, when they're not wearing their uniforms or whatever, they usually are in civilian clothes, just like what we would wear. And it's always changing for them. They're not. They're not really ever wearing similar clothes throughout the entire thing. Which I, I like. I so I so appreciate because I like one of my pet peeves. <laughs> is there a the huge advocate behind that. Like, that is, like, so annoying. I'm like, nobody wears something the entire, like, like you're not Ash from Pokemon. Like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> like it's just annoying. Yeah, but, but also, too, like, I care about that. So, like, I think it's cool to see characters in different clothing. Yeah. No, I think it's cool as well. Um, but now you know where you can check it out in an anime, his Soul Eater. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, thematic elements of music... Because we're creators and we listen to music while we create. When you're creating for, so Jay, you're making Infinite. What what music do you look for to make Infinite? Like, what do you listen to to make Infinite work in your head? You said you you guys say you picture like 
an A and B oh, thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what what music do you use to picture that? Like, what are the thematic elements you look for? It's high energy for me. Yeah. Yeah, high energy. Something high energy, high octane. Um. Uh. That'll that gets the well. Yeah, yeah. I would say something high energy, high octane. It's got to be. Uh, keep me upbeat. Keep me up going, especially for that story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. That's that, that. You don't look for anything else in music. It's just high energy. If you got high well, energy, well, for infinite, like, yeah, because like that's that's what that's what that story is to me. It's 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 infinite. It's it's boundless. It's never stopping. It's got to be high octane, high energy. Um, and then if I had to pick anything else, other music that I would use when I'm writing infinite is like more um, ambience music, more mellow music or instrumentals without vocals and stuff like that. That way, that kind of helps me mellow out between the non-action scenes or whatever. That mm-hmm. way, I can kind of focus on um, the depth of the conversation, um, how to bring out the depth of the characters, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, like, nice. you get like a flow established. Like, yeah, your 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 high energy peaks and then your somber, emotional valleys, basically. Mm. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So, what about you, Cameron? Uh, Let's say Run, for instance. Run, uh, why don't you explain a little bit what Run is, because oh, okay. Run is still kind of in the works. Um, I get to explain. Okay, Jay gets to hear this twice. Uh, Run is a story that I actually had. It was actually, um, if you, if, for me, it's actually the first story I've ever created, period. Um, mm-hmm. I actually, <laughs> first time I created it with my older brother, um, but it's far from that. Right now, like, I was, I forgot what I was doing. When I, Run was actually back with uh like when we were when we were in pilot, um, back in there with like Saturday you know Saturday M and all that, but uh I kind of got away from it because you know that's when I started thinking about bass and um uh, some other stories that I had so, but you know Run came back when I was I think I was just watching like a western with like my dad or whatever because he's big fans of those, mm-hmm. and um, so was my grandfather, as well and. The story kind of like the story kind of came back to me. And, um, I've I've always wanted to tell like a really cool like love story. Not that the whole the whole story itself is encompassing around love, but I wanted to tell something that you know love was definitely in there, but not like it doesn't like it's not like you know corny or super duper mushy or whatever. But I definitely wanted to tell something with like a couple. So um, that story that part of it came to me, and I kind of just wrote it from there. And, I, and you know, so that's what exactly what Run is. Run is about this this kid named Axel, um, Axel Jones, and another girl named uh, and his girlfriend at the t- his girlfriend right now named uh, Nora, um, Ross. Um, I only I don't want to give about too much information about it. No worries. Pretty much, it's like uh, I was definitely influenced by shows like Outlaw Star, um, Trigun. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of those were definitely in, in, uh, influences of mine when I, you know, was writing this and creating it. Um, so if you obviously are fans of that, you'll definitely like Ron. Expect for it to drop in March. That is definitely the goal. I have a lot going on, but that is the goal I'm shooting for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. So it's kind of like a, a space western. It's not a space western. Nothing. Nobody leaves. <laughs> nobody leaves. Nobody leaves. But when I say I lost Star, for example, like uh, that. Um, I like Outlaw Star a lot because I like the different characters, mm-hmm. the different like personalities, this crew that comes together, um, uh, and like just those different types of personalities and how they mesh. It's like this crazy wild ride. I think that's why I'm such a fan of like things like that, Outlaw Star, like freaking Semi Champloo, because you mm-hmm. have these different personalities. You know, it's not just one main character. I feel like they're all main characters. So that's what to me runs gonna be. Um, I'll grant it right now. Obviously, it's just those two main characters that people are going to be exposed to. Um, mm-hmm. There's going to be another character that's introduced pretty, fairly quickly, but I like that. There's that just that you know that camaraderie of like you know these characters coming together and these mm-hmm. crazy adventures that they go on or whatever. So you know, there's a lot in store. I just I, I wish I could tell more, but no, no, I don't want. I, <laughs> I, you uh, answered the question. Um, this follow-up question is. All right, so you're making this kind of 
uh, this it's Western adventure, I guess, with camaraderie mm-hmm. and these people coming together. What music do you listen to to inspire that? Um. <laughs> All right, now I tried listening. To, like I was like, you know what? Let me listen to some country. That didn't last long, <laughs> so <laughs> I stopped that real quick. Um, no, I uh, probably honestly the same stuff, really. Um, mm-hmm. What I was listening to before, um, I to me the music part of it, like I said, it keeps, keeps me focused. But it's really just sound. Like mm-hmm. I need something in my ear um, when I draw. Uh, I hate drawing in like pure silence. Um, mm-hmm. If it's not that. I listen to a lot of podcasts. So uh, if I'm not listening to music, I'm listening to some type of podcast, something, an interview, something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what I look for in music, I'll tell you guys, is, again, I like the sense of camaraderie. Uh, I like longer songs generally. I don't like constantly switching from one song to another to another to another. I actually really like albums that bleed together, where one song leads into the next, leads into a next. Um, it, it helps me keep this flow going, and it actually really like helps me focus on what I'm creating, what I'm doing. And uh, with Dizzy, that's what I'll do is I will find a couple albums like that where the music flows together fairly well. Uh, uh, the album uh, Somewhere Under Wonderland by Counting Crows, which features Palisades Park. Uh, another album, Haunted, I think it's Haunted, by Radical Face. That's a really good album I really like. Uh, more somber music, honestly, which is uh, a bit different than what I think a, a lot of the songs for Dizzy are, but it, it keeps me calm. <laughs> it's uh, I can't have too high of an energy when I'm creating stuff for Dizzy, because I've noticed it when I'm, when I'm writing it, I get a lot, I'll, I'll get kind of bouncy, I'll get excited, I'll get energetic. And that's not a bad thing. Mm. But I can't I can't write my entire comic like that, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I, I recently was uh, putting together a whole bunch of things for uh, for Ruben, the artist, and we're working, we're working on another chapter. And uh, I was writing the story, and I got too energetic. It was fight scene, fight scene, fight scene, fight scene. I was like, that's not what I want my comic to be like. So I had to sit down, I put together a playlist, and I put that on, and I just listened to it start to finish. And it turned out much better, actually. Um, but no, I can't, I can't do high energy. I'm the exact opposite of you, Jay. You need fuel to keep going, and I need, I need something to keep me calm. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna, I was going to ask um, both of you guys, like, when it comes to, like, writing, like, because... Both of you guys are what you guys are working on has like you know multiple characters. Like for example, Jay, um, any of these characters that you created with like you know Infinite, are any of their personalities based off of like people that you know? Real people, some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, characters that I'm a uh, that I'm a fan of with personality traits. Yes. Okay. Like for instance, Zathor is like a mixture. He's like, um, one of the personality traits that I wanted to instill in him that I really appreciate as a leader is uh, Optimus Prime. Mm. I actually okay. I get that a lot from Zathor. I see it. <laughs> I okay. see it's Optimus Prime character. No, that definitely makes sense. Um, myself, Cameron, uh, no. None of my characters are actually based on real people. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Um, except for that character in the cover. Except... <laughs> <laughs> This is a joke from earlier. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, they're not. Uh, if anything, I'd have to say they're all based on traits of myself. Never really, like, myself as a whole. But, like, mm-hmm. these extreme substance of emotions of mine. Like, King represents the one aspect. Miranda represents another. Nate, another. All kind of derived from just different ways I feel about things. Different emotions I felt in different places. A lot of the story of Dizzy is inspired by personal life story events taken to this exhibitionist, high-profile fictional retelling. And you know, Uh, that's really cool to hear that from you because that makes sense on why. Because I've never understood the aspect of people that create stories and say that they want to create just the one story that's their all-mecca. That's like their story that they put all into. But when you put it in that way where you say these characters and this story and everything is a part of me. You you basically took 
every vision, every thought, every message you wanted to convey and put it into one story versus where I have separated it amongst other stories and telling it in a different way. So I'm glad you said that. That that helped me clear up something that I have been wondering for a long time. <laughs> no, well, that's why we do this podcast, Jay. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, yeah, they're all just like these different subsets of in the, in the same way that music. I just kind of separate my music for different characters, different emotions I want to capture at different times. That's kind of how my characters are. When I want to write about one thing, I'll feel I'll kind of get myself in it. That's why music is such an important thing. Is when I want to write King, I listen to high energy music. I listen to like like I listen to a day to remember songs like kicking down the door and take and never taking no for an answer. You know, when I want to write uh, stories for Miranda, I listen to these melodic long string songs where they're drawn out. They're slowly building over time. Uh, it helps to derive what I want in my characters, and it helps me better develop mm. what I want in that character. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I completely agree. So, what about you, Cameron? I'll flip the question back at you. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I write a lot of my characters based off of just friends I know. Um, definitely with run more so mm -hmm. than base. Base certain elements of it, like um, in base, you know, he has an older brother. That is something that I kind of like instill in a lot of my stories. Like certain elements of my stories are based off my real life. Like um, uh, I know for Run, you know, little quote unquote spoiler, uh, the girl is definitely based a lot. Her person, certain parts of her personality are definitely based off my fiance. Um, mm -hmm. and certain characteristics. Uh, There's such a face. Okay. I, Cameron, I'm definitely not going into deviant art to pull up some of the images. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I don't care. Um, no, uh, certain character traits uh, of Axel, you know, are, are going to you know reflect myself. Um, certain characters I know uh, that I'm going to introduce um, are going to be based off of my friends, family, stuff like that. So, because I, I think it's you know, for me that gives me an, sometimes like when I'm creating a character, it's at least I'm trying to I'm trying to do this to improve like my writing when it comes to my characters is like, you know, all right, what type of person is what type of person is he or she? And sometimes like by saying, you know what, hey, you know what, I'm gonna kinda base him off of this person that I know or this person that I met. And it kinda gives me something like gives me like a clay to work with and I can kinda mold it. You know what I'm saying? It gives me something to go off of. And that's pretty much like what I do with like, a lot of like my characters now. Oh, that's good. Um, this is Nora the Desert Moon Ross character Cameron was talking about. Uh, you can see it on the video if you're watching. Uh, no, it's it's interesting you talk about characters because I honestly think music takes way more power when you're creating characters than when you are creating your story. Because, um, yeah, you'll write... If you're writing a story, you'll write, depending on what your mood is, what you're listening to, you can create a more somber, a more epic, a more heroic, all these different adjectives to describe your story. But the key to driving that story forward is the characters. And so when you're creating the characters and you're developing them, it's, it's way more important you know, the music you listen to, I think. You hear... Uh, all the, all you know, you hear the tones in the music. You hear the happy, the sad, the ups, the downs. It helps create a character much more rounded, I think. So mm -hmm. that'd be my tip: is if you're writing a character, listen, find some songs that remind you of this ideal character you have in your mind. And when you're writing that and you're creating that, that's what you always hear. I don't know. What do you think, Jay, as a writer? That the music has an impact on the yeah. cre creation of characters. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the creation of character is like, like, like basically, uh, what I'm saying is like, a, if you have a character, um, it's much the music you listen to will much more influence your story when it comes to listening to music for a character versus listening to music when you're just writing. Um, I would say if I have to use music as far as it goes for a character, I'm going to use it for um while I'm, after the character's created, I'm going to use it to um, energize their mood. So, like, if mm -hmm. K.O.'s going through a moment where he's in, a, he's in a moment of dark or anger or 
anything like that, then I'm going to go to music that's going to help me put me in that mindset and mode to write it that way. To mm-hmm. where I give him that mood instead of me. Because if I'm an upbeat kind of guy and I'm like, yeah, you know, woohoo, and I'm trying to write a moment where he's in anger, that's not going to work. But I, I normally just based off the character's emotions, I'll write, I'll listen to music and let that um, drive that uh, scenario or scene, mm-hmm. per scene. Okay. Um, let's see. <clears throat> well, that covers all the topics. That was way quicker than I thought. Axel Jones! <laughs> Yeah, this is Axel, the Desert Sun Jones. I like that. Uh, yeah, that's a really cool gun. Uh, so, uh, let's move off of music now. We talked a lot about music. Uh, we got you here, Cameron. Let's talk to you about Run, if you don't mind. And we'll talk to you about bass a little bit if you want as well. Uh, cool. you, you, uh, one thing that you've talked about, since we're talking about characters, is I think I think you have really good character elements. To, like, you're really good at designing characters. Yes, there you go. You took the words out of my mouth. So, let's talk about that, uh, if you don't if, Do you mind? No, go, no, go ahead, man. So, like, you created this character, the Desert Sun, Axel. Mm. Like, what, what, what was, what was going through your mind when you were creating it? Um, one, and this is not to make it like some type of like racial thing, but I wanted him to be black. Oh, uh, that was definitely. And, and if you don't mind if I go in this, this slight direction, because me and Jay were just talking about this the other day. Go for it. Um, not saying that, oh, because I'm black, like, all my characters have to be black. No. It's just that I am trying to, if I'm going to, like, if when people, like, you know, start seeing my work, you know, because obviously I'm not no big name artist or whatever trying to get there. Mm-hmm. But when I do get to that point, I want my character that they see in kind of the forefront to be someone of color, to be someone like me. Only because... Growing up, I didn't see a lot of that, especially not in, like, the manga or anime or, you know, at least not the comics that I read. I didn't see a lot of that at all. So that's just something that I, I definitely wanted um, to put in. It's not something that, need, you know, has to be there because I definitely have a lot of characters who aren't black or whatever. But uh, just making that one point, I definitely wanted that. Um, I wanted to take, like, a, I guess you could say more of a urban, whatever, hip-hop feel, and then kind of put it in this, like, Western world, mix it up a little bit, and so it's kind of went crazy. I just had fun with the design. That's definitely what I do. I, just, I like to have fun. The If you go back, like, I have it in my DeviantArt, the first thing of run was, like, this little sketch. It's right there. This doodle. <laughs> this doodle. Is it? Uh, might be. That's the second one. Actually, the no. Second. That's the third. <laughs> There's, there's another one before that. There's another one before that. Um, uh, which the the story, the premise behind it was going to even be different back then. Uh, it wasn't even about Yeah, the first one, yeah, that one. I guess you could say that's the first one. Yeah, let's go with that. That's the first one. The first, like, you know, whatever design over on. Before I even went in that whole Western feel, I had a completely different story. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but, yeah, once I knew that I was going to go in this Western kind of feel, I definitely looked up some inspiration. You know, I'm like, man, like, let me get some references, let me find out elements that I could kind of take and play around with and have fun with. And that's what I do. Um, uh, once again, like, <laughs> after, you got, after you got off that hangout the, the, uh, the other night, Josh, I mean, Jay were talking for a minute, but we were definitely talking about how, like, people are always, like, trying to, like, say, oh, man, as soon as they see something, they're like, oh, man, you copy this, you copy that, you copy this, you copy that. Um, and I hate that because I'm like, one, man, you're not going to create anything that has never been seen before. Mm-hmm. You're not. But what I do is, all right, I'm going to take something and I'm going to put my own spin on it. So, like, mm-hmm. I knew that, okay, his pants, you know, there's gonna, they're going to have, like, a Western feel to it, like the cut of them or whatever, even the, the cowboy boots. I still put my own spin on that, all those different things. Whenever I see something, I just take it, I play around with it, I sketch a uh, I sketch a bunch of times a whole bunch of little stupid little thumbnails. It looks like scribbles. I highly doubt anybody can interpret it, but I know what it is, you know. <laughs> and then from yeah. there, I kind of just you know I move on. And like when it came to uh, what you see there, the gun that he's holding, which is called an um, elemental arm, which is a really big, deep, you know, really big part, uh, part of the story. Um, I knew I wanted him to have a, sh- a sawed off shotgun, mm-hmm. so I looked I looked up sawed off shotguns. I I knew what element I wanted him to have, uh, and I just played with it. I just had fun. 
Like his yeah. like his design was honestly one of the few designs where like I drew it once and I was like, this is it. Like mm -hmm. I don't I don't need to do nothing else. Nor design I drew that jump like five times. <laughs> <laughs> like that one, you know, didn't come as easily. But his design, it just came to my head. Like I was at work, um, and I which I, I actually a lot of their designs are created at my job um, when I have downtime. And uh, I just sketch them and I put them in my pocket and I come home and I redo them or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I definitely got inspiration from uh, like old Clint Eastwood movies. Mm -hmm. um, I looked at some of his stuff, like some of like the old posters. Um, yeah. Yeah. So like that, was, like those things are kind of like the just, like the elements that I wanted to like instill with a lot of the designs. That's cool. No, I really like uh, I, as someone who enjoys westerns. Like, uh, I'm from Texas. Western Western culture is big <laughs> down here. And I'm a huge fan of it. I really like the designs of him. Uh, I like the poncho. I like the sawed off. Love it. I love I love your take on the cowboy boots. I think they're really cool. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. I actually, never knew the name of that thing. Now I know poncho. Got it. Yeah, it's like a it's like a poncho. It's a uh, uh, you wore them. Uh, I think it's gauches. Yeah. Coaches. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what they they wore them. They're, 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 they wore them. They're like South American cowboys. They're the original cowboys. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. I know a lot about the stuff. As I said, I love the West Wings. I love design though. So. I really didn't know that. So like that's something for me because I, I had no idea. Yeah. Okay. So. Cool. Um. But yeah, that's pretty much like uh, with Nora was kind of pretty much the same way. Nora was actually like I wanted her to. I, I didn't want everybody to look, per se, straight up out of the Western, like, super duper, you know, I guess you could say, to the T. I wanted it to have my own spin. Um, that was the first sketch of her. Uh, I don't even know. She didn't even have a name at that point. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, I wanted her to have, like, Native Native American elements within her, uh, mm -hmm. her, her design. Um, and that's kind of just what I, what I went off of. A lot of the times I just sketch. Like, usually when it comes to character designs, how I go about it is I sketch the first time. I don't even look at references. I just mm -hmm. I, I throw some music on, and I just sketch. From there, I'm like, all right. Then I really kind of start critiquing myself. I'm like, okay, how can I make this better? What could I do? Um, and I, well, like I said before, like, fashion is a big part of it. So I always try to figure out a way that I can make their jacket different make um, certain things, whatever that they might be wearing, different. Um, so just to give the design more pop and more appeal, I guess. Mm -hmm. Not play it not play it safe, I guess. Yeah. No, I feel it, yeah. No, that's uh, interesting. As I said, I, I really love your character design. Uh, Cameron did some stuff for... Di has he done anything for Infinite? I know he's done some stuff for Dizzy, but has ha, he done anything? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Nah. Ah, only thing I ah, did, with, hey, only ah, thing I did with Infinite was that that uh, that contest. What was it? Was it really? The, it wasn't even my characters. It was yours. It wasn't, yeah, I just made up something random. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, no, it was so no, fun no. though. Oh, hey, did I actually plan on? Hey, I actually plan on redoing. <laughs> there you guys. Wanna, yeah. Don't check out Infinite. But you ready to check out? Uh, look at this. Look at this. This is a really good character, Cameron. I love this character. This is my favorite character from your series. What's, what's that series called again? Dizzy. Don't check out Infinite. Yeah, that's one of the few designs I would say. Like when I drew, when I drew that dude, like that just again, that just kind of came to me. Sometimes I, I love it. It's it's in my that's background my folder. It's yeah, in my, my favorite. Yeah, I love the shoes on him. Definitely Sonic inspired. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, so I'll answer. So to, uh, I had a question I forgot. I'm a bad host. Um. Oh, I wanted to ask if if it's not too big of a tell. No, so no. We see both Nora and Axel have uh, guns in their most recent images, right? Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You okay well, there, Jay? I, I already know the answer to that question, so that's. Uh, I wasn't here for the the super secret hangout that I that I, I left because I was well, I was sleeping. You just <laughs> asking, you're just asking for too much now. I'm asking mm -hmm. for too much. Well, mm -hmm. I was gonna ask, what's the what's the big di like? What was the? the I don't was mind there, this. Was there a, my, a moment where you're like, I don't want to do hand to hand weapons. I want to do guns. I don't like the idea of doing. 
like um, swords and staffs. Is that part of the Western influence? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted definitely them to everybody to have this, uh, like I said, elemental arm, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. You know, going back to bearing arms. You know, um, I wanted that to definitely be the influence. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was like, man, I want to make like some just outrageous guns, <laughs> like just crazy. And these are just like you know, again, giving a little—I don't mind giving a little spoiler, ain't like it's out or anything. But uh, these are just kind of like the first forms. Throughout the story, they get upgraded, uh, they mm-hmm. get even crazier. New things are added to them. New uh, elements are added to them. Um, mm-hmm. So hers. Of course, is the moon. His is the sun. It goes back to the the overall influence of um, the comic in general. The basis of it was this couple. Uh, they're you know coming as one. You know you have the moon and you have the the sun. Pretty much, he's the sun. She's the moon. You know like they they have this like love. I guess you could say. So um, that uh, that's what like one is always kind of based around of. Um, and then you know these other these other elements are just kind of like coming. I need an that. elevator. I need a log line. I need an elevator pitch from you mm. on oh. run to sell people on it. I need, you need right. to sell the world. All right, I'm selling the world right now. Read it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's what you're gonna do. You get into an elevator with a with an executive. Let's say you get in there with freaking Masashi Kishimoto. You just tell him, hey, read it. I don't want him taking over my crap anyway. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, like, oh, man, I like your stuff. All right, bye. <laughs> Get him to autograph something, and then before you leave. <laughs> autograph this. All right, yeah. I'm going to outsell you one day. Bye. <laughs> yeah, so. No, a lot of, a lot of kinks of it, uh, some kinks of it are still kind of getting worked out, but that is pretty much like the basis of the story. It's just about this girl and this guy going on this adventure together um, and pretty much... You know, holding these incredibly powerful weapons, and then the wild wire that they go on, and the other character that I, you know, that the only other one that I put in there is this kid Elijah, who ends up being, um, who's end up, who's actually a gunsmith who works on these type of weapons. Um, mm-hmm. So it's kind of like their journey and the people that they meet, you know, on that journey or whatever, um, which is going to explain a lot of like where the elemental arms are all about, where they came from, um, who else has them. Uh, and also, is he, you know, that kid, Elijah, is he the only one that can actually work on these guns? Because right, he, right. You, know, you left, the, you, you created a good world that leaves a lot of questions to be answered. So that's a very exactly. good, that's a very good thing to do for stories. Exactly. Exactly what I wanted to do. So, with this story, I, I was telling Jay that, like, I worked, I would probably say this is the hardest I've worked on a story in a while. Actually, period. Like, you know, when it came to, not even just the characters themselves, writing it. The backgrounds, like, um, not that I make excuses, but I'm pretty busy during the day, um, mm-hmm. especially, you know, planning a wedding, which, you know, I'm getting married, but... Spoiler alert! Man, whatever. <laughs> Spoiler alert, whatever, yeah, I'm getting married. Woo-hoo. But, um, it takes up a lot of my day. So, like, for me, like, I just try to set goals, and it's like, man, you know what, if I, even if I don't draw anything, like, I'm still working on the cover for it, for, for a run, it should have been my schedule. I, I wanted it to be done by the weekend. But that didn't happen. So if I can't do anything for it for a run, I know at least I write every day. I write mm-hmm. something. I progress the story somehow. I think about ideas. So that way I can feel like, you know what, I did something toward the story. So I can at least stay on track for its release or whatever. So I, I feel like I've put a lot of time and effort in this. I, I can't wait for it to drop because, like, yeah, it's. it's I, not that I try to be cocky or anything. Like I think people are gonna like it, and I hope people do. Yeah. So we'll see. Awesome. So where, when when it's out, are you gonna upload it to Tapastic to? It will be on to pa- only two places. Um, decided to put it back. I start, decided to you know start my Tapastic, you know whatever thing again because I kind of felt you know stop posting on there. Um, mm-hmm. but I plan on putting it on Tapastic and also putting it on um Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those will be the two the only two places that you can read it. Yeah. I'll be sure to include a link to both your Tapastic and your Tumblr so people can read it when it comes out. Sweet. Awesome. So I think that'll about do it for today. I wanted to ask you guys, so then, so final thoughts on music in your comic, your theme song, Jay, Glitch Mob, Fortune Days. Yeah, what about it? 
You like that? You like that? You're going to recommend it to me, people? Uh, what songs are like that that you would include in a soundtrack? Like, what songs would you recommend to people that like that kind of music? Well, you've got... Well, shoot. Glitch Mob is another one, and uh, there's a... Um, um, what the heck? Are, what the heck is their name? Um, Sh- the Shanghai Restoration Project is another group that yeah. I listen to a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jay got me on them, man. <laughs> yeah, they're they're really really. It's like um, it's like Asian inspired music, but with like a hip hop pop flavor. It's like it's something that's un. It's like you can't really put a finger on it, but it's it's good for me. I enjoy it, and I was surprised that I found others that enjoyed it. Um, but on top of that, I would recommend those two. Um, again, I always listen to Midas, Midas, M-I-T-I-S. Um, he's another, there's another great artist that I listen to, and then Avicii. But I just listen to those because I like that kind of music regardless. But as far as, like, writing music, is between, um, Audio Machine, that's, like, my epic uh, orchestral, uh, theater, theatrical music. Like, that's, uh, Audio Machine's phenomenal. I love them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Wolf Wolf, too. Um, whoever's dog that was barking, wolf, wolf. for real. Uh, <laughs> I, I was like, did he plan it? Like, go <laughs> <laughs> on with the flow, baby. Hey, as soon as he said it, man. I don't... <laughs> dog, you, dog knows what's up. See, I recommend some music. The dog is like, whoop, whoop, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> I got another my iPad right now. <laughs> so that's some good high energy music. Uh, Cameron, what kind of music would you recommend to people? Uh, for creating, um, uh, based on definitely, the- I would say for people that get into nerdcore, man, there's a lot of dope, freaking like, dope artists out there. Samus, Megaran, Richie Branson, Sky Blue. I really like Sky Blue. If you are a fan of New Jebez, which is the uh, you Samurai know, Champloo. Samurai Champloo creator, rest in peace. Um, if you're like, you know, Jay Dilla type stuff, which is, you know, just these amazing hip hop instrumentals. Um, sensual, I guess, not since it's sensual, sensual is the wrong word. Uh, more like euphoric type of sounds. Um, you'll definitely be a fan of Sky Blue because it's pretty much like that music, but we're just really dope raps over it. Uh, him, um, I am definitely a fan of a, a band called 1OK Rock. You know, these guys have heard me talk about them all the time. I play their music a lot. Um, those are probably some some that I would definitely recommend if I can pick. And also on my SoundCloud, I am not gonna try to go through all those artists, but I listen. I have a lot of dope like instrumentals that I found via SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are what I usually listen to. So okay. SoundCloud has a lot of good music. Like and a lot of people that like you know don't really get a lot of shine. Sometimes I just kind of go through and I just you know play some stuff and I end up finding like a really cool instrumental and I'll like save it. I'll save it to like a playlist or something. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for myself, my creation music for like my somber, slow story music that I call it is uh, I like this band called Radical Face a lot. They're not going to be for everyone. Um, the guy's got an interesting voice, but he writes a lot of uh, music about family life and, and how that has influenced him as a creator. Um, and then also uh, Counting Crows and A Day to Remember. Those are also some two bands I really like. Counting Crows, a lot of people have heard. A Day to Remember, a lot of people have heard. But I recommend checking out uh, the songs you haven't heard by them that aren't as popular, that are much, they're, they're much more better in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you get a lot of different elements from it. Uh, Counting Crows is really good, like piano music, and A Day to Remember has a lot of really good just, rebel, like I said, rebellion music and camaraderie, and I really like that when I'm writing, so. That's my Sweet. high energy, somber, and emotional. Hey, Cameron, before we go, we're about to sign off. But before we go, I'm going to challenge you. I challenged Jay last week, and I got I got a couple takers in, in the, you know, outside of the podcast. But March is my month where I like to reread my favorite comic book series, God Ray. And God, God Ray? God Ray. God Ray. G-A-R-E-I. God Ray. The Enchained Series. I need to find out what to say. G-U-R-A what? G A dash R E I, Gare. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know he's butchering it somehow. I just don't know how bad he's butchering it. I'm sure I am, but uh, it's my. Oh, R E I. Okay, I see it. R E I, Gare. Uh, it's my favorite comic book series. I reread it every March. I'm gonna challenge you. I know you're busy in March. 
but find like a, a like short... a chick, some chick with a dragon and chains or something. Yes. No, not a dragon. It's a. It's a yeah, we'll talk about this in a sec. <laughs> um, but I I challenge you find a short comic book series or or find something to read through the month of March and read oh, it. I am. Yeah, I, 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 mean, well, I, mean, I don't know if I'll finish it because it's One Piece we're talking about. Oh. Yeah, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm attempting to catch up. <clears throat> that in and of itself is a journey story. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, my name's Joshua Harper. I, I'm the writer for Dizzy, uh, joined by my esteemed co host, J1 Hero, writer of Infinite. Uh, and today we are joined by our special guest, Cameron Knight, writer, <laughs> creator of Run and Base, which you can both check out. Uh, Topastic. And Tumblr. Base is on right now. Run's coming out soon, hopefully. And, uh, it will. It will come out soon. <laughs> we'll need to do that. All right. And uh, we're signing off for the night. See you guys later. Peace. Peace.